to NATO movement. Welcome to the No to NATO movement meeting for today, October 18. Uh, this meeting is organized by the No NATO Working Group of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, US section. I'm Teresa Elamine. I'm one of the conveners of the No NATO Working Group. Uh, we have a 30 month plan that connects the No to NATO movement with the UN decade for people of African descent. We started our plan in July of this year and it will go until December of 2024. Uh, this is our strategy chart. Uh, thank you, George, for adding it. As you can see, we have goals, we have allies, partners, we're doing research and education, and we have some activities and strategic objectives. Uh, our point is to educate branches in the US section about the international no to NATO movement. Thank you, George, uh, for showing the chart. Um, George Friday is the other convener uh, for the No NATO Working Group. So George, uh, if you could please explain how the meeting will be run today. Thank you, George. Good greetings. It's good to see you all. Thank you for joining us today. I'll let you know a little bit about how our meeting will be run today. We'll hear from five speakers. Each of the speakers will speak for up to 10 minutes. After they've spoken for five minutes, you'll see me put up my hand to indicate there are five minutes left. When they're down to two minutes, you will see me put up my hand again, giving them a two minute warning. At 10 minutes, I'll mute and we'll go to the next speaker. When the speakers begin to talk or as we introduce them, you'll see on the screen their bios so that you can know a little bit more about our speakers. We want to save time so that there's plenty for questions and answers. During the time the speakers are talking, the chat will be disabled. When the speakers are finished talking, you can add to the chat and your questions, please put those in all caps so that we'll make a point not to miss any of those. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Our first speaker is Tamara Lawrence of Canada. Tamara, please. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really wonderful to be with you all. I'm speaking to you from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, the traditional territory of the Six Nations. For my presentation, I'm going to give a little bit of um, history, some background. So Canada was one of the 12 founding members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in 1949. Most of the founding members of the Alliance, the United States, the United Kingdom, Portugal, Netherlands, France, Italy, and Belgium, were brutal, racist, violent colonial powers that plundered the wealth of the global South. NATO was founded to maintain this Western domination and capitalism and to stop the Soviet Union and the spread of communism. A year after the alliance was founded, NATO powers were engaged in the Korean War. The Korean War helped the alliance consolidate its command structure with the United States at the helm. For three years, the NATO members unleashed a very vicious war against the people of North Korea. The towns across the country were bombed and sprayed with napalm. Millions of innocent civilians were killed and displaced. And records show that the United States purposefully massacred civilians and Canadian soldiers raped Korean women. NATO has never been a defensive alliance since its inception. It has been a dangerous, aggressive military alliance. 
It was six years later after the founding of NATO that the Soviet Union and its satellite states formed the Warsaw Pact in 1955. And at this point, I'm going to show my slides to you. So hopefully you can all see them here. Um, so 35 years later, the Cold War ended and uh, the Soviet Union collapsed and the Berlin Wall came down. And in 1992, the Warsaw Pact ended. There was no longer a justification for NATO and for high military spending. And people around the world called for the dissolution of NATO and for a global peace dividend. And that's the message that Bill Clinton, a Democrat, got when he became president in 1993. But Clinton didn't listen to the people. He listened to the arms dealers. In the mid 1990s, the weapons manufacturers led by Lockheed Martin pushed hard for NATO expansion because they wanted to keep the money flowing. It was Lockheed Martin's a vice president of strategic planning, Bruce Jackson, who formed and led the US committee to expand NATO in 1996. At the same time, Jackson established the project for a new American century, PNAC, with uh, other uh, neoconservatives like William Crystal, John Bolton and Robert Kagan. And Kagan, as some of you might know, is the partner of Victoria Newland, who has worked for the US State, State Department for the past 30 years. And she is the one that helped orchestrate the coup in Ukraine in 2014. In 1997, PNAC released an infamous, an infamous report called um, Project for a New American Century, Rebuilding America's defenses, and this called for the United States to maintain military preeminence and global domination and said that NATO was crucial to make this happen. The report also argued that Russia and China needed to be contained and must not threaten American interest. And during this period, uh, Jackson traveled with the CEO of Lockheed Martin, Norm Augustine, two Eastern European countries, the former Warsaw Pact countries, to convince them to join the alliance because they sought new markets for their weapons. And then back in the United States, Jackson and Augustine put pressure on Congress to support this expansion. And during this time, one of the staunchest supporters for NATO expansion in the Senate was Senator Joe Biden. In 1998, the Senate voted overwhelming to approve Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic as new members of the alliance. But ironically, that same year, the Senate voted to reject the United States from joining the Kyoto Protocol. Then Jackson and Augustine pressured the US government to give loan guarantees to these new members to buy new weapon systems. Um, American uh, weapons. And later, the U.S. Committee to Expand NATO then evolved into the Project on Transitional Democracies, which was still headed by Lockheed Martin's uh, Bruce Jackson. In the early 2000s, this Project on Transitional Democracies lobbied the U.S. government to admit um, more members into NATO, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia. Now for countries to become a member of the Alliance, they have to meet certain political, economic and military conditions. They have to move towards a free market economy and they have to modernize their militaries to be interoperable with allies. And this is why US weapons manufacturers love NATO. It is a guaranteed market for their weapons. NATO puts tremendous pressure on its 30 member states to increase military spending. In 2014, at the NATO summit in Wales, allies made a commitment to spend 2% of GDP on the military and of that amount, 20% on new weapon systems. According to the latest uh, defense expenditures report, military spending went from $895 billion in 2015 to $1.1 trillion in 2021. So since the Paris Agreement in 2015, over these past six years, NATO allies have increased military spending by $200 billion annually. 
But these same countries have not been able to find the resources to meet the $100 billion climate financing target. So uh, NATO is the reason why my country, Canada, is um, buying new fossil fuel powered fighter jets and warships for a cost of almost $400 billion. NATO is not about protecting people's security, sovereignty, democracy, and freedom. It is about protecting the profits of weapons manufacturers. Um, and that's why NATO has ensured endless war for the past 25, 25 years. In 1999, NATO illegally bombed the former Yugoslavia. In 2001, NATO info invoked Article 5 for the very first time and launched a deadly and destructive 20-year war in Afghanistan. Then in 2011, NATO bombed Libya, and Libya is still in chaos. NATO is occupying Iraq. NATO instigated this terrible war in Ukraine against Russia, and not once has NATO called for a ceasefire or no negotiations because NATO doesn't want peace. It wants the war to continue. I am convinced that NATO is the greatest threat to the climate because it diverts public resources away from climate action into carbon intensive militarism, and it makes global cooperation impossible. In August, in an interview, the former leader of Bolivia, Evo Morales, called NATO the greatest threat to world peace and called for its abolition. He said, we need a worldwide movement to abolish the alliance. I am very proud of the fact the peace groups that I'm with, WILP Canada and the Canadian Voice of Women for Peace, VOW, have taken a clear and unequivocal position that Canada must withdraw from NATO. We have been loud and relentless in our opposition to the alliance. Last year, WILP Canada published a leaflet in French and English, NATO is a threat to people and the planet, and VOW has had many webinars and banners, and we protest regularly, and I will put those links in the chat. Last year in Glasgow was the very first time that a NATO Secretary General attended a COP, but I was there with my banners and my buttons. NATO is a climate criminal. I urge you to get involved in the No to NATO network that Christine will describe shortly. The global movement against NATO is growing. You can see it with the people in the streets now in France, in Germany, in Canada. Please join us. We need you. No to NATO, no à l'OTAN. Merci. Thanks. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Agneta Norberg. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm a long time peace activist. I was one of the women for peace in um, marching to Paris towards nuclear weapons, marching to Moscow in 1982 against nuclear weapons. Нет, ядерному оружию на Западе в Востоке we shouted in Moscow streets, and then we went to Mos to Washington. So I'm. This was happening in the beginning of the 80s. And we are there at the Reagan administration's horrifying policy. And now we have, we are in the same trap with threatening nuclear war. I, my lecture or my, my intervention is Sweden, a platform for war towards Russia, or who is calling the shots in Sweden. But I will start by quoting my friend from Turkey. He has followed the total change of Swedish policy since he arrived to Sweden in the 80s as a political refugee. He said, Sweden has become a mine donkey. What is a mine donkey? A mine donkey is sent towards the smugglers who is, want to come into Turkey, but there are mines 
So they send a donkey in front of them. So the donkey is exploded if there are mines. So he said Sweden has become a mine donkey for the United States of America together with Ukraine, Poland. So we are will be one of the victims in a war. And another thing, what has happened during these times of horror, a modern witch hunting has started towards Russians who are living in Sweden. Valerie Giorgio, a world famous Russian conductor was expelled the other day from Royal Swedish Academy of Music for one reason, he is Russian. And in the newspaper, you can also see that 180 diplomats are expelled from the European Union. Shameful. I live in Stockholm, Sweden, a country famous for being a strong voice in the United Nations, a strong force for economic and gender equality, for promoting peaceful solutions in conflicts. This is not the case anymore. Sweden has gradually turned into a society with high economic inequality and a society in decay. Additionally, Sweden has turned into a platform for US NATO war exercises towards Russia. A press which never gives a fair reporting about the Nazi rule in Ukraine has depicted Russian as the sole culprit to the situation in Ukraine. Last Monday, a right-wing government was installed where the Sweden Democrats with Nazi roots plays an important role in the background. The new government has signaled that it will strengthen the control and punish extremists very hard. Who will be the targets? Most probably some young male criminals in the cities, but will the targets also be left-leaning organizations? I fear that. We have in Sweden memoirs from the 40s when communist hunting was strife and, memo and Sweden erected concentration camps for communists in 30 places in Sweden. These camps were shut when the Soviet Red Army defeated the Nazis in Stalingrad in 1943. And today, the leaders in Europe are in a way repeating the de devastating policy towards Russia and depicts Russia as their enemy. The US has been allowed to install military bases in all European countries. President Putin has protested against this and said that it is a red line that NATO has crossed and won't tolerate it. Additionally, the US has deployed nuclear weapons in Belgium, the Netherlands, Italy, Germany, and Turkey. And yesterday, the US launched a big war exercise steadfast noon to train the soldiers to load the nuclear bombs B61 model 11 into airplanes. This consider, coincide, coincides with Russian military exercise. Sweden has abandoned its non-aligned and neutral posture and is now one among the aggressors supporting the US NATO war machine. The former government applied for joining NATO, but this has not been discussed at all among people in Sweden. I consider this a move. I consider this move a kind of a coup d'etat. This is followed by shameful actions by the US military, which this August intruded into Sweden with USB 52 stratofortress bomb planes to train to drop real bombs on ground targets at the military training field 
Vitzel in the north of Sweden. The bombers took off from Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. When arriving in Sweden, these giant flying military fortresses were guided by Swedish JAS Gripen plane to the targets in Vitzel training field. These US military exercises are dangerous and alarming because Sweden has not signed the UN agreement of abolishing nuclear weapons. The mass media has played a decisive role in this outcome. Daily bulletins about the aggressive and unpredictable Putin have resulted in the planned effect. Sweden must join NATO. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. What I heard since I was a child. This saying, yes, what I said, during the 50s, when Soviet was in shambles after World War II, early on in 1952, the new Cold War was launched with Senator McCarthy and Sweden followed. The same alarm is now sounding loud in the media, intensifying day by day. The war in Ukraine in Eastern Donbass started in 2014, eight years ago, but Western media choose not to cover it until February this year when Russia decided to help the people in Donbass after eight years of suffering under the Azov Battalion's horror. This background is never mentioned in the reporting about the war in Ukraine. We have to tell the truth about the ongoing wars. NATO must out of Europe. West must stop arming Ukraine, abolish nuclear weapons. Thank you. Thank you, Agneta. Our next speaker is Ulla Klotzner of Finland. Ulla. Thank you. Could you share my PowerPoint, Katrin? Could, I, could you share my PowerPoints, Katrin? Yes, thank you. First of all, I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to this very important webinar. It's an honor for me to be here. My topic is winter of fury, Wutwinter uh, in German, the uh, Ilskans winter in Swedish, which is the Nordic country's uh, uh, language. Next topic, to uh, uh, slide, please. But I will start with, with uh, Finland and NATO. Lord Hastings, NATO's first secretary general, once said that NATO's, NATO's task is to keep the Soviet Union out, the Americans in, and the Germans down. This fits very well with the US full spectrum dominance ambitions, confirmed in the new US national security strategy of October 22, October this year. In the introduction, President Biden writes, the national security strategy outlines how my administration will seize this decisive decade to advance America's vital interests, position the United States to outmaneuver our geopolitical competitors. Next slide, please. This means US full spectrum dominance with the help of NATO and includes the NATO enlargement from 12 founding members in 1949 to 30 members today. The Maidan coup in Ukraine 2014, engineered by US with the help of NATO, Finland and other European countries buying F-35 fighter jets from the US, the Ukraine war launching the NATO applications of Finland and Sweden. Next, please. We are facing a satanic plan. Russia must be brought down, then the turn comes to China, and EU is sleepwalking into anarchy. 
In Finland, the president, all political parties and the media turned into NATO supporters overnight. No democratic debate, no articles about alternatives, nothing about a new Cold War or a risk for nuclear war. Next, please. Next, please. But can this satanic plan really be pursued? An escalating wave of social unrest has broken out in Europe. It started already in spring, but here we have some examples from the summer and this autumn. Czech Republic, September, 72,000 protesters demanding neutrality in the war case, less EU influence, gas supplies from Russia. Next, please. Germany, former Eastern Germany in September, in several towns, Monday protests that have a strong symbolic, they played a decisive, a decisive role against the dictatorship of the German Democratic Republic. Next, please. Um, protesters say, uh, NATO is no, okay, you jumped. I'm sorry, <laughs> but back to Germany. Uh, NATO is no guarantee for prosperity and peace. We have to open Nord Stream 2, no weapons to Ukraine, stop Russian sanctions, and so on. Now we take UK. Next, please. UK, October, over 100,000 protesters took the streets across the country, declaring enough is enough. Next, please. France, October, a massive protest of people marched through Paris, demanding France to radically change its stance on NATO and the EU. Next, please. Spain, Madrid, in March, there were several, several thousand protesters against ruining the countryside. And in June, where Anne and I were uh, uh, on place, several uh, 30,000 marching against NATO, before the NATO summit. Next, please. Portugal in September, the movement always the same paying, which means of course the citizens held protests in several places. Next, please. Italy, September, news reported that more Italians join nationwide protests against overpriced energy bills, which, which are due to the war, of course. Next, please. Spring, and again in September, demonstrations, I'm sorry, one picture has dropped down, uh, demonstrated for cheap electricity for all the people. Next, please. Austria, September, nationwide protests, Ukraine, war is responsible for high energy prices. I just today got a note that they will have a new protest on the 26th. Hungary, next slide, please. Hungary, Budapest, thousands protested against easier regulations for firewood logging. They stand up for nature in the middle of a fuel crisis. Next, please. Poland, September, coal miners protesting against energy price crisis. Next, please. Unfortunately, nothing much to report from the Nordic countries because Denmark, Norway are NATO members and Finland and Sweden are NATO applicants. We are very obedient. Baltic countries, uh, all the citizens are very pro the Ukraine war. Next, please. Finally, some words about the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage end of September, used by Western media to further intensify Russophobia. But as a reminder, around Halloween in 1982, the CIA blew up a gas pipeline in Siberia. It was supposed to bring gas mainly to Germany. It was part of the brutal game to crush the Soviet Union. Next, please. Here you see the pipeline coming from Russia down to Germany and also then distributing further on Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. Uh, next, please. 
But again, as a reminder, President Joe Biden, Senator Ron Johnson, Polish President Duda, have openly spoken in favor of getting rid of the pipelines, the Nord Stream pipelines. When the explosions happened, Radoslav Sikorski, former foreign minister of Poland, current member of the EU parliament, openly congratulated the US on Twitter. Thank you, USA. It disappeared from Twitter two days, some days later. Next, please. Who profits from the sabotage? New York Times wrote recently about the crippling effects of Brussels sanctions on European industry and the working class. Due to gas cut, factories have to cut production and tens of thousands of workers will lose their jobs. Europe's energy intensive industries will move to cheaper countries, such as, surprisingly, the United States. Handelsblatt, a German commercial newspaper around the same time, wrote that Washington attracts German companies with cheap energy and low taxes. And as a conclusion, the next slide, please. Therefore, I remind you again about Lord Hastings about NATO. Keep the Soviet Union out. That is what we are doing now. The Americans in with their uh, full spectrum dominance and the Germans down and the Germans are going down with this energy crisis, but not only the Germans, but a big part of Europe and the social unrest will continue and it will get even harder. It will be a winter of fury, wood, winter, and that might also put an end to NATO. Get NATO dissolved. And I'm sorry, my US friends, U.S. out of Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Christine Karch in Germany. Hello. Also from my side, thank you to the organizers for uh, this uh, interesting webinar. And I hope we can come to closer cooperation against NATO it is time to get rid of NATO on, and to put it to the trash of history. Since, are you sharing my screen? Yes, I will. One second, please. Since 2009, the international no to NATO network is involved together with local partners in the preparation and execution of protest action against NATO summit. And from no to NATO, we'll talk about the last summit in Madrid in June. And I will speak about the new leading role in Germany, uh, which Germany wants to play in, on the international floor. At the end of my uh, speech, I will also talk about the preparation and counteraction for the next NATO summit which will take place in June 23 in Vilnius, Lithuania. If the Ukraine war, among other wars, is a proxy war of the US NATO against Russia, then Germany should do everything possible to end this war as soon as possible and not add fuel to the fire by further deliveries of weapons and heavy equipment. Uh, next one, please. For me, it is unexplainable that Germany is involved in the war against that country which Hitler invaded in 1941, with the result of burned earth, unimaginable misery and suffering, and not to forget the 27 million deaths of the Soviet Union. And additional, it was not believable for me after the um, war in Ukraine, which racism and Russophobia uh, explored in Germany, Russian children get hit in the school, Russian uh, people left their job if they're working in culture or all, also in the scientific uh, community. Ukraine already, the corona pandemic was used to further militarization. We went to war against the virus. 
The Bundeswehr in uniform helped in hospitals, testing and vaccination. And the arms industry also profited from the Corona aid money. With Russia's unjustifiable war of aggression against Ukraine, a new, even greater push of militarization was triggered. A special military fund of 100 billion euros was secured in the constitution in order to finance the projects already on the drawing board. That as a future combat air system, a European project, trainings with armed drones, which should not be ordered, are now on the agenda and flying around. The new fighter jet F-35 for the modernized US nuclear weapons will be bought in the war they will be flight by German soldiers. This nuclear sharing is against the non proliferation uh, treaty. Germany will implement NATO's uh, 2% uh, target of GDP uh, by 2026, increasing the military budget from 50 billion euro in 2022 to over 73 up to 85 billion euros. Germany currently has the seventh highest spending on armaments. With 73 billion, it will be the third ahead of India, France, UK, and Russia, directly after the US and China. Next one. Already six years after the founding, in May 1955, Germany joined NATO and the Bundeswehr was installed. The first NATO Secretary General has described the reason, as we have heard earlier, to keep the Russians out, the Germans down, and the Americans in. This is still true, except that the Germans are no longer small. They are the strongest economic power in Europe and the fourth strongest in the world. But they still do internationally mainly what the US Americans want and the permanent US presence in Europe as a bridgehead ensured at the same time, the enforcement for the geostrategic and economic interests of the USA. That also shows very clearly today the war in Ukraine. A former Germany defense minister, de Maizière, was one of the co-chairs of the expert group for developing the NATO 2030 papers to strengthen NATO. This concept creates China and Russia as enemies and still includes the first use of nuclear weapons, which makes the current situation so dangerous. The threat of nuclear war was ne has never been as great as it is today, and the battlefield will be Europe, especially all the military bases and installations. Next slide, please. US NATO command and the airbase Rammstein. Germany hosts the United States European command and the United States African command. Both are in Stuttgart. No country in Africa wanted to have the AFRICOM. The Bundeswehr leads the NATO forces in Lithuania and the Bundeswehr also participate in training of Ukrainian soldiers. And according to the scientific service of the Bundestag, with us, Germany has become a war party. Mm. In Kalka, the NATO combined air operations center controls the airspace in Europe and belongs to the NATO headquarter aircom located in the airbase Rammstein, the la largest US airbase outside the USA. Its relay station is essential for the drone war. Meanwhile, it is also serves as operation center for NATO's Ukraine war. In September, the US Minister of War invited for the third time some 40 countries of the Ukraine contact group to convince them to produce and deliver more heavy weapons for Ukraine for a long term. Germany is increasingly becoming the central hub for the military activities of all NATO members in Eastern and Southeastern Europe, which have already been trained accordingly with the Defender 2020 exercises. 
in Germany's dominance and hegemony aspirations in the EU are further advanced with the former German war minister von der Leyen as president of the EU Commission. The EU, especially under pressure from Germany, is turning more and more into a subordinate of the USA. Mm. By supporting the economic war of the USA against Russia with its own sanctions, which are also dragging its own population into the downward spiral. Next, please. Alternatives, what do you do? In general, we have to overcome the war logic and implement a culture of peace. For this, it is necessary to oppose all the hidden interests and power structures that condition militarism and prevent a peaceful and just world. The value-based foreign policy is pursued by the traffic light coalition in Germany, is in reality an economic war against Russia. This only serves the US and its American first politics, leads to inflation, energy crisis, and food shortage, not only in the global south, but also in our own country. Chilling for Ukraine is only in the interest of the arms industry, but, not, but it is not suitable for ending the war. We have to promote the idea of common security, a security that not only means my own security, but also that of my counterpart. And it's not only for Europe, including Russia, but also for uh, other parts of the world. We have to go to the streets for negotiating instead of shooting. We also have to set up a process for preparing counteractions against the NATO summit in Vilnius. Easily speaking, the next summit in Vilnius is a war summit. What we now urgently need is ceasefire. Vilnius is a difficult place for counteractions. There is no peace movement in Lithuania and without local partners, it will be difficult. Please go one slide back. The NATO NATO network together with IPB and World Beyond War will definitely initiate a 24 hour online peace wave around the world. An online counter summit may also be possible. Here is the pictures from the last peace wave in Madrid. For the preparation, we have set up content-oriented web We were out of time for Christine. Teresa? Uh, thank you, George, and thank you, Christine. Our final speaker is Anne Wright, United States. Hello. Uh, a pleasure to be with everyone today. Uh, it's great to uh, have Wilf sponsoring this wonderful opportunity for us to uh, talk about not, a not so wonderful organization, NATO. Uh, it's a great to be with all of the presenters today. Uh, I know all of them from various uh, uh, times that we've been together at, at many, many places around the world, and it's great to see you all. Uh, I want to uh, share, let's see, uh, share my little presentation here, and we'll see if we can get everything going. What I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, just a minute, we'll see if we can get it. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> just a minute. Uh, uh, where we want to go from here. Well, okay, there, there we go. Okay, I'll start there. Uh, I'm sitting out here in Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, halfway around the world from many of you all in Europe, and uh, this is the headquarters of the Indo-Pacific Command. And I'm mentioning this because as we focus so much on what NATO has been doing in Europe, uh, mm. NATO is uh, not just North Atlantic Treaty Organization, as it turns out, it's moving into the Indo-Pacific. And the Indo-Pacific is the terminology used by the US military for one of its uh, unified commands. Uh, this command, which is headquartered where I'm sitting right here in Honolulu, Hawaii, 
for the United States military covers all of the Pacific and then uh, most of Asia, as you can see here. And uh, as much as the, the, the horrible things that are going on, the war in Ukraine and Russia, uh, we're, very also, we're also very, very concerned about the tensions uh, that uh, the US, NATO and others are having on uh, 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 China and uh, the Pacific. Um, let's see if we can move over some of the hot spots that we think about uh, in the in the Pacific and that NATO has something to do with now are North Korea, um, uh, Taiwan, uh, and right now we have uh, aircraft carriers, uh, U.S. aircraft carriers, and for the very first time, the British sent in one of their few aircraft carriers into the Pacific. We've had French armadas that have been coming in to join with the United States in armadas that are challenging um, China, China's back door, so to speak. We have North Korea that has uh, uh, conducted 43 ballistic and cruise missile tests just in this year. Uh, its nuclear testing had been suspended for four and a half years, and now it looks like um, that it is going to restart. All of these very, uh, very critical uh, things that are happening that we all should be very concerned about. And just as in Europe, where there seems to be very little uh, uh, appetite for diplomacy and negotiations, it's kind of the same way out here in the Pacific, that we just have the United States making threats toward China, putting in more sanctions on China. Uh, we have uh, U.S. Uh, uh, senior officials. Here's the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, going to Taiwan to purposefully uh, antagonize uh, the People's Republic of China, which every time a, a senior U.S. official, which actually the, the U.S. officialdom started going in great numbers into Taiwan under the Trump administration, but have been followed by large numbers of congressional delegations and senior State Depart uh, Department officials to Taiwan. And that's triggering a response from uh, of China with large numbers of aircraft that fly across that small uh, Taiwan Straits uh, from the mainland of China uh, right to the air defense zone of Taiwan making it a very uh, dangerous situation that at any time a miscalculation, a mistake could uh, end up uh, with, um, you know, with uh, uh, aggressive actions, even more aggressive than what are going on now. Let's see, we'll get this going one more. Uh, China uh, has been making some bases out in the South China Sea, taking small atolls and expanding them into military bases. Uh, it is their front yard of their, their country, that area of the South China Sea. Uh, many of these atolls are of course contested though by other countries of the Philippines, of uh, Vietnam saying those aren't really your atolls, but the, the, the Chinese have taken them and have made military bases. Um, one must remember, although the United States has over 800 military bases outside the United States, and many of them in uh, South Korea and in Japan, and now in Australia and in the Philippines, and we have the U.S. territory of Guam, which has become a major hub of U.S. military action. Now, the, speaking of actions, the largest naval exercise in the world is conducted every two years in the Pacific. It's called the Rim of the Pacific, RIMPAC. And these uh, military war maneuvers, sea maneuvers, uh, can give you an idea of the range that NATO now is uh, uh, encompassing because NATO countries are now part of this Rim of the Pacific a military exercise. This last summer, 26 countries participated, over 25,000 military personnel, 38 ships, four submarines, 170 aircraft, and not nine, nine nations that had ground maneuvers primarily on the Hawaiian Islands. Now of those uh, 26 nations, eight were NATO countries. So what in the world are NATO countries doing coming all the way over to the Pacific other than NATO is expanding? 
But Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, the UK, and the United States, those NATO countries were a part of it. And then little known is that there is this thing called the NATO partnership, countries that aren't full members of NATO, but are characterized as partners. And those in the Pacific are Australia, Japan, South Korea, and New Zealand, plus a Latin American country, Colombia. So you can see from this that we have, uh, NATO is definitely, uh, has already expanded really to the Pacific. Let's see, you, I'm gonna go back here. And just to show you some of the things that went on out here in the Pacific, right out uh, off the waters of Hawaii, all sorts of missile testings went on, sinking of ships, practicing sinking ships, uh, the amphibious landings that we have on the Hawaiian islands that uh, we protest uh, vigorously because they are coming ashore through coral heads, going onto beaches where nesting turtles are, uh, the endangered monk seals, all of these things are, of course, uh, endangered by military operations. Now, we've, uh, we had good substantial protests of uh, RIMPAC here in Hawaii, uh, as did other countries in the Pacific. We had the uh, uh, Pacific Peace Partnership for us, uh, uh, organizations throughout the Pacific that challenged their nation's participation in uh, these exercises. And we did have a few um, graphics that we created ourselves, World Without RIMPAC, and canceling these things. We, those are our hopes, those are our aspirations to cancel the RIMPAC op, uh, military operations. And both uh, Christine, and uh, who was a great organizer of the NOTA NATO uh, summit in, uh, in Madrid, and Ula, who was there, uh, we uh, had a, a, a very good uh, participation of people from the Madrid area, 30,000. Uh, that marched through the streets of Madrid. And here's uh, Ula and uh, all over on the right with us. Uh, and it got quite a bit of publicity in, in Madrid. And I, uh, I will say from uh, the US perspective, peace perspective, uh, we have not been able to mobilize sufficient numbers as uh, Ula has mentioned that you, you're seeing in, in European capitals. Uh, I feel very badly. Uh, that we have not been able to get these numbers of, of, um, of US citizens to come out on the streets uh, to challenge NATO. Uh, we'll keep trying, but it's not been easy. And here's a couple of us that were uh, after one of the big marches there in NATO, uh, at the no to NATO. So I just wanted to uh, offer this as, a, as part of our deliberations on uh, NATO, uh, not just in the Atlantic, but also in the Pacific, and to urge everyone to uh, to really uh, talk with your communities about uh, the dangerous, dangerous things that NATO is doing throughout the world. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Anne, and thanks to all of our speakers. Yes, let's do the clap. Um, we're now ready for our Q&A. And one of the things that Atneta has provided us is a map of the US bases around the world. And I believe we have that map, Katrin. If we could show that before we uh, open up the chat and begin questions. Imagine uh, all over Africa, uh, US bases in South America, all over the world, U.S. bases. Uh, this is a U.S. <clears throat> military prison. Uh, Agneta, would you like to say something about the map? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm very proud that you show this map and all the others has a lot of equipment and, and technicalities and I wasn't prepared for that. So I am uh, glad that I at least could contribute with a map. This is made by me, uh, and uh, it's only a fraction of, of basis, of course. I can't just put up all 800, but it is from um, the book. I, I really would like you to buy the basis of empire and also uh, 
there are some books, so we know that maybe as one person said to me, when I stood with this map in the middle of Stockholm and held it up for all to see in the tourist time in July, and there was a man coming up to me and said, oh, it's my country. Do they have bases in my country? Uh, I mean, many of us uh, don't even know. So you. I would like to say that this <laughs> map is extremely important. And I thought, I will finish soon. I thought in my stupidity that when everybody saw this map, they would go home and do the same. But it didn't happen. Because if you do, if you can't see the, the big Nada. grip, Dear it is Nada. impossible. <laughs> yes, it is impossible to understand the power. Thank you. Yes. At Netta, uh, we need to go with questions uh, that have been posed in the chat. Uh, but one of the things that we've learned through this process of building this meeting uh, to highlight the No to NATO international movement is about these side agreements with countries in Africa. So in a few weeks, we will have an AFRICOM out of Africa meeting uh, where we will point out how NATO has agreements with countries in Africa under the objective of counterterrorism. Uh, the question that stands out in the chat right now is what is Will planning in terms of actions we could take in the USA. Code Pink will join you. Well, as Ann just pointed out, we have a serious case of fragmentation in the anti-war movement in the US. Uh, members of WILF have been pushing for a summit of all of the various fragments of the US anti-war movement. That includes UNAC, that includes UFPJ, it includes Peace Action, it includes Code Pink, uh, but there is some indication that there are differences inside of the various fragments of the anti-war movement. And so, and right, if we could get veterans for peace and we could get others to try to call this summit as we get ready for the next moves towards no to NATO. The European uh, countries clearly are very active, as we could see from ULA's presentation. So this meeting is recorded, and it will be available. And hopefully, uh, dear Cynthia, uh, we could get to the point where Cold Pink, Wilf, and other pieces of the US anti-war movement uh, can come together and be stronger so we could put a million people in the street at some point in the near future. It has been done before. So George, do you see any other questions in the chat? We asked people to put their questions in all caps. So I yes. saw that one so Here's a, um, a comment and question from Julie, who's new to Will and uh, thought she heard one of the speakers say, that NATO initiated the war in Ukraine. And, and uh, Julie is saying that, I thought the Russians bombed Ukraine first. Is there a speaker that like to address that? Maybe Tamara? Uh, uh, Ula has her hand up. So Tamara can too. We... Okay, so we'll hear from Ula and then we'll hear from Tamara. Please keep your comments to two minutes, Ula. Yes, it was Russia that invaded uh, Ukraine, but you have to go back. You have to go back to, to when NATO started to enlarge. But because at that point already, Russia said they don't want to have NATO bases at their border. And that is what has happened during the whole NATO enlargement. And and there was, uh, when, when, the, when the Berlin um, uh, wall fell, there was a promise to Gorbachev from all the Western leaders, NATO will not go an inch eastwards, but they did. So Russia has been pushed into a corner ever since the enlargement started. 
and and the warnings have been clear don't come closer and that is what happened then there was the coup in 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 ukraine in 2014 which was absolutely done by nato you, you, the us and even cia which started this whole business so you have to go back in history and that is why it's so bloody difficult in finland to get somebody to to understand the whole picture you have to understand the whole picture please <laughs> that's absolutely necessary and when i showed the pictures about the the uh, demonstrations in europe they are not all against nato but they are initiated by the war because the the prices of energy have gone so high that people will starve in the winter and freeze and they are taking the streets because of the energy and that is the reason is the war so the war has to be stopped thank you ah uh, thank you ula and tamara if you could speak to the lockheed martin question uh that was placed in the chat tamara if you could take two minutes to comment thank you i'm sorry i I don't see that question um, about Lockheed Martin in the chat. I, I'm. Are you able to read it? Ah. Uh, um, I, I I'm not sure I see it. I can read it. It's from okay. um, Cynthia Papermaster. Let's emphasize the role of Lockheed Martin and the war profiteers in enlarging NATO and making profits from killing. Yes, so that's exactly the case that I was making in my introductory remarks, giving you some background about how it was Lockheed Martin that established the US committee to expand NATO in the mid 1990s, and that pushed for new countries in Central and Eastern Europe to join the alliance because it served as new markets for them. And if you look at this, this uh, latest a war in Ukraine, and you look at the stock prices for companies like Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, Raytheon, Boeing, I mean, they've all increased dramatically. They are making a killing out of killing, yes. and they have been for a very long time. And NATO paves uh, the way not only for American weapons manufacturers to enrich themselves, but also to push uh, Western capitalism into new markets as well. So there's there's the militarism and the capitalism side. But I just want to add very quickly to what to what Ula said uh, about going back and looking at this conflict in Ukraine. You also have to recognize that in 2008 at the Bucharest summit, uh, NATO put in its declaration that Georgia and Ukraine would be part of NATO. And this was a serious red line to Russia. Mm -hmm. NATO knew in 2008 that this was going to antagonize the Russians. And then, as Ula said, it was it was NATO uh, that uh, instigated the coup in 2014. And then for the past eight years, it's NATO-backed Ukrainian security forces that have been shooting in and shelling into the Donbass, the uh, Russian-speaking uh, Ukrainian uh, minority in that region. So this has been a long war for Ukrainian, uh, for Russian-speaking Ukrainians um, and, and a real threat to Russia. Um, and I just want to bring uh, uh, raise a couple of uh, sources for you. Please check out the Gray Zone. They have excellent videos and excellent um, uh, articles, as well as Consortium News. And I will put that in the chat. And two documentaries quickly to bring to your attention is Ukraine on Fire and Revealing Ukraine. And I'll put all of that information in the chat. Thanks. Uh, thank you. And I do want to thank everyone who's uh, placing information in the chat. As I mentioned earlier, we have a 30 month plan to educate US branches of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And this recorded meeting and the information in the chat will be used for that purpose. Now, George, if you could help me with the other question I saw in caps. Uh, we have about 10 minutes remaining for the Q&A. I've seen two other questions. Um, one is a request to, I've got to find it again. I didn't know that I'd lost it. Here we go. 
Can you sketch your view of a future peaceful world? No military in any nation, an international peacekeeping force that includes EU, USA, Russia, et cetera, under the UN. Does someone have that dream vision they want to share of our speakers? Well, I'll take uh, that one. And oh, Brian, go ahead, thank Anne. you. Yeah, well, it, uh, unfortunately, I think it is a dream, and I don't think it is going to come to fruition because of the uh, warmongering characteristics of uh, many of the countries uh, led by the United States. And I think the UN, the U.S. will always block uh, a, a large uh, or a peacekeeping, uh, international peacekeeping force that would be run by anything other than the U.S. Uh, so tragically, I don't think that's that's going to come to fruition, uh, even though that could be a good dream and, and to keep working on it. But I think the forces and the powers of uh, warmongers are so strong uh, that we're, uh, I mean, we know we've got a real difficult road ahead of us. Thank you. Uh, George, you said there's another question. There is. Um, to Ray Street. Uh, Ray Street has waved long time. Uh, well, uh, we're um, muting everyone, Agnetta. So Ray Street has to write her question uh -oh, in the chat. Sorry that it's hard to read. It. Sorry, Ray. I found it. Um, could I give the view from the UK? Yeah. Uh, you. Uh, two uh, minutes. Two minutes, Ray. Two minutes. I'll try. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to thank all the speakers who I know well for such um, very good presentations and also for Will uh, for organizing the seminar. I think it's very important to know about what's happening in the UK because it's a sidekick of the USA in NATO. And our former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, who is a real warmonger, has, going, has supported NATO and he went out there to, and it, we are supplying um, armaments. And in fact, British Aerospace has just announced that he's going to make a new weapon, which is so effective in the war, the howitzer. So it'd be making more money and sending out more weapons than this new one. And our current prime minister, who, as you will all know, is in desperate trouble. But she's also a warmonger and was seen riding on a tank in um, uh, Ukraine. And it's backed up by the Labour Party, the opposition party, who says we must not criticise NATO. We're not allowed to do that in the Labour Party meetings, it's unbelievable. And at the same time, this is what we get in the mass media, <laughs> pro-NATO. Um, but there is opposition here, I want to tell you that. The Stop the War Coalition and the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, which you all put up as the peace symbol. We had a conference last week and I drafted a resolution on global NATO, which Anne Wright's been telling you about, particularly mentioned Latin America, because the agreement with Colombia breaks the treaty of a nuclear weapon-free zone in Latin America. And that was passed with a huge majority. And the worst thing is that you should know, um, uh, because Anissa mentioned this, about the NATO bases, nuclear armed bases across Europe, we had uh, up till recently five, but now we're getting nuclear weapons and nuclear capable aircraft back in the UK, in the East, at a place called Lakenheath, without any discussion in parliament, any discussion and no public debate. And there they are, nuclear weapons. So we'll now have six, NATO nuclear armed bases across Europe. It's just appalling. So CND is mounting a huge opposition, demonstrations, you know, talks, webinars against bringing nuclear weapons back. It's definitely not popular with the population. Uh, thank you, Ray. Um, I would like to let everyone know 
uh, that all of the speakers will have two minute closing remarks. So we have just a few moments left for Q and A. George, are there any other questions in the chat? Yes, um, Michael Eisner put several things in the chat and one was a meme. I can't, I don't know how to show a meme. But the question that he's written is, what does victory mean if Ukraine is reduced to rubble and death? Oh, that's the meme. Is that also a question? If so, someone could take that. And one other, who is Wilf coordinating actions on this issue? Who in Wilf is coordinating actions on this issue? Uh, well, George, I think Michael's question is a rhetorical question. Uh, and so I'm not sure, Michael, are you uh, there to say uh, what you mean for two minutes? Uh, I, put the, I put the title of the uh, meme in the chat. Uh, it, it is a rhetorical question. If you use the link, you'll see why. Uh, I just want to make people aware that there are lots more memes like this if you want to use them in social media or in your newsletters, uh, just go to the, the website, uh, solidarityinfoservice.org. I'll put it in the, in the chat. Thank you. Uh, and I would also like to thank Michael. I had requested from the Peace in Ukraine uh, Coalition uh, information about the trade-off in spending billions uh, for war voted by the US Congress and what human needs could be covered by. And Michael came up with a beautiful uh, um, document that I'll be using in the work that Wilf will be using to educate branches around the US about why the No to NATO international movement is so important and why we must be engaged. So I wanna thank Michael for providing us with, this is what $27 billion could buy. And so we'll be using that. I'll be passing it out actually at meetings this week in Columbus, Georgia, the home of Fort Benning, Winsack School of America. Oh, Michael is putting it in the chat. Thank you, Michael. Uh, so is there another question, George? I thought I saw a question in caps. There is, um, and it can be, what our speakers include in their closing two minute statements. Please let us know how to get involved in the No to NATO Summit and what follow up there might be. Uh, well, that sounds great. And please watch out for the AFRICOM out of Africa webinar that we hope to do in early December. It'll be the two year anniversary of the Wilf AFRICOM out of Africa webinar that was done through the Disarm in Wars Committee of Wilf uh, in the US on December 4th of 2020. So we want to do a follow up this year. So we're gonna reverse the order uh, for the two minute closing statements. And so we'll begin with Anne Wright, two minutes, uh, then Christine, two minutes, uh, then Ula, two minutes, then Atnetta, and then Tamara, two minutes. So George, if you would help them keep time. So uh, please, Anne Wright, two okay. minutes closing. Well, thank you. Thank you again for this. And I think uh, Christine will probably give you the information on how various other organizations can be a part of the No to NATO uh, Summit that we'll be having in Vilnius uh, uh, at the next meeting of NATO. Uh, but until then, certainly uh, organizing things in your own community, uh, showing this the recording uh, is a good way to get started if you don't have people in your own community that have a lot of information already, this will be a very, very good um, uh, look at uh, the various aspects of uh, NATO. And we thank Wilf US uh, for putting it all together. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, to get in contact, um, 
in the no to uh, NATO actions against the counter summit. We have a mailing list. I wrote it in the chat, but you found it also on our website, website no to NATO.org. And there are also uh, the invitation written for webinars to prepare action. And I mentioned it also on my PowerPoint uh, 27th of November, we will have a huge webinar. The time will be announced later uh, to see how we can work together and what we can prepare in June and also uh, before June. And I will uh, send you uh, also my email uh, in the chat so you can directly contact me if you want to uh, have uh, more information about all this preparation. And I think we really should see that we can go to the streets, not only during the summit, also now and fight for a ceasefire and for negotiations and support the peace plans which are on the table, like the plan from the Pope and uh, Assas, and this should be done in the uh, uh, support of the United uh, Nations. Uh, thank you, Christine. Uh, Hope, uh, see you all in the next webinar. Thank you. Uh, Ula. Yeah, it was questioned if we believe in peace. I do believe in peace. Otherwise, I wouldn't sit here and otherwise I wouldn't <laughs> spend right. most of my day in working for these subjects. But for peace, we need a mass movement. All politicians are out of reach. Greens, black, uh, whatever, they are all out of reach. Uh, this war might initiative such a mass movement, as I showed in my, my, my uh, statement. When people realize that energy and food prices are due to the US and EU sanctions, they will get mad and madder and madder. Um, many peace negotiation su suggestions have been made by Pope and by everybody, by, by the, the two Minsk treaties have, have not been put into, into realization. But all these suggestions and all these semi-treaties have been shut down by the US and NATO. And when people uh, in this mass movement, which is now in progress, realize this, it might be the end of NATO. And this could be the start of peace, at least for a while, at least for a while, I hope. But then when we come to the question with UN and peacekeeping um, forces, the trust in UN is very low at the moment. I mean, um, the general secretary is doing his best, but, but also there, NATO and, and US has a very big influence. So before that could happen, uh, I think UN needs a reform. But yes, we work for peace, always, till the end of the day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ula. At Neda, two minutes. I was very short in my introduction, so I want to have the opportunity for those who live in the northern part of Sweden, Finland. I writ, wrote a pamphlet, The North, a platform for warfare against Russia uh, in, 19, in 2017. To understand all the installations ready for war, I think it's important to point out these are here very close to Stockholm, the world's third biggest listening station, listening in on all <clears throat> Russian cables in the Eastern Sea. I suggest that we have knowledge about what kind of installations already in place. And I think also conclusion, we have to be visible outside. I would never know about the German resistance un, if they not had went out in the streets. So big or small, we have to be visible and also know what is in our neighborhood, like in this pamphlet I wrote, very close to Stockholm, a bomb target is installed, FRA. 
the big listening station. Nobody, very few know about it. So we are bomb target. I think it's important to understand as they did in Norway, they for 30 years ago wrote a book, the bomb target Norway. So there they understood where the important places were. Thank you. Thank you, Agneta and Tamara, you're last. Uh, thanks to the organizers and thanks to all of you for uh, joining this webinar. I would like to reiterate what Anne and Agneta said about the importance of taking local action. In January of 2019, the uh, 70th uh, anniversary of NATO, um, I've been protesting NATO for you know more than 20 years, but I decided that I was going to do something uh, more sustained. And in January of 2019, I went to Toronto once a month and I started protesting outside the NATO Association of Canada office, which is a NATO um, and arms dealer funded think tank. And uh, I, I started this action all by myself, but by the end of the year, I had a group of people. I created you know, these fantastic permanent banners that I use constantly and 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 just building and unifying a movement in Canada against NATO. And like I said, you know, we are persistent and we are public and we are pervasive with our message that Canada must withdraw from NATO and the alliance must be abolished. I also want to say that I'm very proud of the fact that WILP uh, has, uh, which has a, a disarmament program called Reaching Critical Will, which is uh, directed by Ray Acheson, she, uh, uh, they have been, you know, very, they've written a, a number of articles and very been very outspoken as well against NATO. And I'll put a link in the chat to an article that they wrote last year about the the patriarchal militarism of NATO. And finally, friends, I just want to urge you to get to get active because it is a matter of our survival. We cannot achieve the uh, Paris Agreement targets and we cannot achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals by 2030 if we um, have this continued NATO carbon intensive militarism and military spending. So please join us and work with us and help us to disband NATO. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tamara. And I do wanna thank Wilf International Secretariat uh, prov providing their Zoom account, and Katrin, uh, who is in charge of the recording. Uh, Katrin, are you still here? If you can explain how the recording can be provided to everyone who attended. Is that the plan? Katrin. Hi, everyone. Um, as I understood, it will be uploaded to WILPUS YouTube channel. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the WILF YouTube channel uh, will have the recording. Um, so um, we will work that out, but it has full access to everyone. Uh, and please uh, save the chat. There is lots of important information in the chat. And George, if you could describe to people how to save the chat, uh, and then we'll turn on our walkout music and give people a chance to save the chat. So George, can you explain how people will save the chat? Certainly. So um, if you're on camera, your camera's at the top of your laptop. I'm I apologize, I don't know the directions for a phone, but I do know that if you go to the bottom of your screen with your cursor in the middle there, it will say chat. Where you open the chat all the way to the <clears throat> all the way to the right, you'll see three dots. If you select those dots, one says save chat. That's all you need to do, and your chat will be saved in a Zoom folder in your downloads or your documents when you go to your um, computer folder. So you save the chat now. I will play some exit oh, music. Well, George, play the exit music, which is about uh, three minutes or so, uh, and so we can wait till the last minute to save the chat because people are still putting information in the chat. Uh, but 
the meeting is concluded uh, and we will play the music we played in the beginning. Women of the World Unite. Uh, and, and you've then, got the link to that song in the chat because we'll stop the recording, you know, capitalism, copyright, 